hey fam welcome 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 once again welcome back if you are old and you are very much welcome if you are new and if you're meeting me for the very first time my name is Chantal Ikabe and I'm always here to pray with you and share the word of the Lord with you and today I want to share a very beautiful psalm and um, there are some things that have been happening there are some things I've been noticing and I just want to peacefully and lovingly address this i believe that is definitely going to help someone as you continue to pray hallelujah as you pray this psalm moving forward and not just psalms chapter 91 but we also have 23 we have um 34 27 those beautiful psalms in the bible so a lot of us we do pray psalm chapter 91 for protection we equally pray psalm chapter 27 for protection and all the other psalms and then we pray psalm chapter 23 as well for protection for god's blessings and all of that and it's wonderful it's amazing but i've noticed that a lot of times while we are praying this for protection we always have a way of thinking and seeing this while we are praying the very first thing i've noticed is that when we are praying this psalms a lot of people don't put their trust in god while praying this psalm but they believe more in the psalm in other words they pray on it as if it is the psalm that is going to bring forth the result and not the power of god that is backing this up and so that is being religious that is being religious we use it as a formula and sometimes while we are praying this we just have at the back of our mind that it's just going to manifest instantly as we pray something is just gonna happen instantly so we are putting our trust on what we are doing instead of the power of god that backs up this psalm that backs up this word so oftentimes we turn to idolize these psalms we idolize these psalms without knowing and so i want us to be able to look further into that today so that we may be able to correct it and be able to pray the right way whatever you idolize god is going to come out of it because he doesn't want to share his glory with nothing or no one he doesn't want to share his glory with anybody so we have to be careful of that we must be conscious of that hallelujah so how do you pray these psalms so psalms chapter 91 verse 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. This is so powerful. Now, when you're praying this, what do you look at here? This first verse reminds us of God's protection, God's comfort, and God's care. These three things. But then it talks about dwelling where the Father is, being present where he is and when you are there where he is you enjoy these things protection you enjoy comfort you enjoy care coming from the father and so when you are praying and trusting god for protection what do you do you pray this with the revelation of god's protection over you with the revelation of god's comfort concerning you and care for you so that is how you pray this you don't pray this with just words you know just um saying words or declaring or maybe memorizing it you pray with the revelation of what it's talking about so if you need protection this is how to do it you say, Lord, your word says in Psalms chapter 91 and verse 1 that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. The shadow talks about his presence, his closeness, nearness to you. That is the meaning of God's shadow. Hallelujah. And you are going to say this, Lord, I dwell in your sacred place. I am your child. I am your son, I'm your daughter, and so I come this day before you seeking for protection, seeking for preservation, seeking for comfort, seeking for care, for edification, whatever it is that comes from dwelling in his sacred place. So you receive all those things, you declare it that way with 
and understanding with the revelation of what the word is saying hallelujah and then in verse 2 you say i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust i love how this one is it says I will say of him, this talks about trust. This talks about the knowledge of who your God is. So you're not just reading this. You're not just going through this. But you are praying it with understanding. That is fellowship. Hallelujah. When you do that, the Lord is going to understand that you know what you are doing. And even the devil will understand that you know what you are doing. And you know what you are saying. And it's going to be so powerful. It's going to be effective when you do it that way it says i will say of the lord you know when you are praying sometimes things may be hard it may be it may seem impossible it may be difficult so what you say is that the lord is your refuge this is who he is to you you have confidence in him and you know who he is hallelujah so he says the lord is his refuge and his fortress refuge talks about the place of hiding a place where you take um refuge where you can hide hallelujah fortress has to do with solidity you know you you have a backup you have something that is is standing as as uh, a stronghold and did not not a kind of negative stronghold but a beautiful kind of stronghold the psalmist said this one time he said the lord is his stronghold he's not talking about that of the mind but he's talking about a place where he can stand solid firm and not be moved and not be shaken hallelujah and so he says my god in him will i trust you're proclaiming your trust for the Lord in those difficult circumstances, those tough moments. I will trust in the Lord. I trust him. Lord, I trust you. I trust you to handle this issue. I trust you to fight for me. I trust you to protect me. I trust you to protect my children. I trust you. And I will trust you even when things, things are tough. I will trust you. Hallelujah. In verse 3, he says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. What does this mean? A snare has to do with a trap. Now, this is a metaphor because the psalmist wrote this. He was talking about a snare and how birds are trapped in a snare. And a fowler is a person or is one who traps um, birds, who puts these snares, who sets these snares. So this is like a form of metaphor. He's letting us know that not only birds are trapped, but also we can be trapped by the enemy. The enemy sets snares, talking about spiritual snares, spiritual fowlers as well. So when you have an understanding of this, you are going to pray it powerfully you will know that there are snares that have been set up against you in the realm of the spirit the devil has set up snares fowlers that are in the spirit have set up snares but the lord is going to deliver you from these snares he will rescue you from these snares. We are living in times that are hard, you know, dark moments. But the Lord will deliver you from these snares. And then he says, and from the perilous pestilence, plagues, diseases, and all of that, they will come. But God is able to deliver you. So if you have some form of disease you're battling with, or there's a plague or whatever, if the devil sends in plague in the city, in your nation, this is how you pray. If you get to Psalm chapter 91, you say lord your word says you would deliver us from perilous pestilence hallelujah this is so powerful and then in verse 4 we are just going to end here um it says he shall cover you with his feather and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler now his feathers here talks about his covering still this is still a metaphor that is being used um a feather here has to do with animal better still who has feathers like birds like eagles i carefully studied about eagles and how they protect their young ones they protect their little ones they do that by covering them with their feathers so you see that this is a metaphor that has been used god here is represented as a father who covers his little ones covers his children with his feathers and under his wings we take refuge 
we take refuge. And the Bible says, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. I believe the Apostle Paul wrote this again. And that was in Ephesians chapter 6 when he was talking about putting on the whole armor of God. So His truth shall shield you. The Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 32, it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. So that truth will be your shield. The truth talks about the word of God. So God's word will be your shield and it will be your buckler. Hallelujah. These things are very important for us to know why we are praying. I can go on and on by the grace of God and by the help of the Holy Spirit. But um, I just want us to stop here um, and, uh, and, and just explain some few things. Um, if you want me to do videos where I can really explain this by the help of the Holy Spirit so that you can understand why you are praying this, I'm definitely going to do that. Let me know in the comments section god bless you so this is how to pray these psalms you pray them with understanding with revelation don't just use them as formulas maybe you are down maybe you are you know faced with a situation and you just want to come and just pray this and walk away no it's more than just declaring it it's more than just um reading it it's, it's more than just saying it say it with an understanding declare it with an understanding pray it with an understanding that is how you will see the power behind it the devil is not afraid of people who just pray but people who pray with truth with revelation with understanding hallelujah with authority that is where the power lies so we have to pray with understanding this applies to all the other psalms that we pray daily and we pray um, trusting that the lord will bless us it applies to all those other psalms hallelujah lord richly bless you keep you protect you let his face shine upon you and if this video was a blessing please don't forget to like it and share it with someone out there. Share with a friend, share with a loved one, share with a family member. I believe it's going to be a blessing to them. Hallelujah. I love you. Stay blessed. Stay protected. And I hope to see you in another one by His special grace.